this is going to be such a fun video. Let me just say that I cannot wait to install this thing into the truck. So what we're doing here, if you haven't noticed, is we're doing this train horn kit. This kit is 160 PSI, which is enough to deafen a man. This here is the air tank. This is my air compressor right here. So we're going to show you all about how to install this. Mount this, wire it all up to the switches, the pressure switch, how to tie it into the factory horn. And, and have an override switch, you can have the train horn on by default, or you can flip it off for safety reasons, or God forbid if you get pulled over and somebody wants to ask you how your horns work, you have a switch to turn it off so that way you can be more stealth about how your system operates, which may be important to certain people depending on where you live. Because these kits are generally illegal almost everywhere. The vehicle I'm installing in this kit in is my 19 Ford F-150 King Ranch. So if you have a later model F-150, this one here is a V8, which does matter because of where I'm going to mount it. I'm actually going to mount most of my equipment underneath the vehicle because you're not. I don't want this thing to be seen. I just want it to be heard. Before we get started, I just want to show you what the factory horn sounds like now. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's just it's just not awesome you know <laughs> it's just okay right before i get started this here is my kit so what i got here is my my tank it's got several different fixtures on there one is a release valve this one here is a butterfly so i can drain the tank in case it's got water and condensation build up in my hand this here is my pressure switch and this here is going to get wired into the relay so that way this compressor will cut on and off automatically because i don't want it to overcharge and i don't want it to be uh, too low on pressure so that way when I need the tank to perform it'll do so and you still see on there it says when it's off it's 150 psi when it's on it's 120 so this here goes into one of these plugs on the tank and it goes in between this relay and my battery so that way this thing is always going to be charging my compressor so it's always at full maximum pressure when I need it this will allow the compressor not to overcharge the tank because then, then it can become a safety issue that you don't want that's why this pressure switch is so key and i have this little diagram basically this here is my pressure switch and you can see this here is my relay the center pinion not being used so here one side's going to 12 volts through my pressure switch connected to the battery same to pin 87 86 is my ground and this is going out to my compressor so that way this is always in line of the power from the battery to the compressor that's charging this component. Super important, right? And whenever you do your con connections, make sure you use this Teflon tape so that way you don't get leaks on your compressor. That's bad. Moving over here, you see this here is my, this is the compressor and this has to stay within a certain distance of this here. That's super important. Both of these components are going to be mounted underneath the truck in the front. And of course, this I can mount wherever I want, where I, wherever I can take the hose and I'm not exactly sure where this is going to go yet, but most likely it's going to go down in the same similar location. So I'm going to start my installation and I got my horn kit there, which has these two leads here for my valve, which is what actually opens up the air pressure and allows this thing to perform its job and blow the horn. Some of them are polarized, some are not. Mine in my case is polarized and I'll explain that later. This here is a compressor, which is going to charge the tank all the time, and plus a relay, which is going to switch the high current amperage to the compressor to power this whole system. Super important. Now in my installation, I'm going to use my factory horn button and I'm going to use that in conjunction with an override. So that way, God forbid, if I get pulled over um, and the police want to check how my horn system works, I have a stealth override switch. So that way it, it works by legal uh, proposition. But in an emergency situation when you got a real asshole parked in front of you, you can use this thing for its intended purpose and I want to use it the way I want it to use it, which enough said, you know how that's going to go. So anyway. On my compressor kit, let me show you what's going on here. There's two plugs on this side. One is a release valve. Here you have a butterfly which you can use to drain, which I'm going to move over here by the way. And when you do mount it and install it, make sure you're using this, which is called Teflon tape. Every plumber knows what this stuff is. Make sure you do that so that way when you plug it into your, your tank, it's going to give you a sure, no leak type of, type of connection. So I'm not going to go there. This is actually going to move over here. And that's why it's really good. You have all these different holes. So you can put different items in different locations. This one is not negotiable. This here is the, the stainless steel hose that comes from the compressor, which charges the tank. This here is the airline, which is going to go to the horns themselves. These three, you can kind of like fiddle around and move them around to best fit your application. So I'm going to have this and this right next to each other 
up underneath the truck. And this is a V8, so I got a shitload of room. I shouldn't say that. I have a lot of room in my truck, so that way I'm going to put these two components right there. And if all goes well, that's going to go right next to those bad boys. So this whole system is going to be up underneath. No one even know this kit's in the truck. Okay, so I got everything in a mock-up wiring. So this is tentatively connected with a fuse panel to my battery for 12 volts. This here is running out to the power of the compressor. I have a pigtail lead ran out for my valve so I can test the horn, which is the fun part. It's coming soon. Stay tuned. But first thing, before we get fun and hear this thing blast and blow and scare everybody in the neighborhood, more importantly is make sure that everything is safe. So important. Like I was talking about this pressure switch right here, that is such a key component that you do this thing properly. I'm going to explain to you how a pressure switch works. So you have power running in, which I will use in my completed installation with a relay switch in the high current to here and here. So what happens is when the compressor sensing no connection from the air valve, that means it's, that the tank is full. But when you're using horn, that's going to decrease the volume of PSI in the tank, which is going to open this switch telling this compressor to cut back on. Does that make sense? It's very important. You don't want to overcharge your tank. So for instance, I'm going to release some of the air from my tank. And when it does, that is going to move the plunger inside the air pressure switch, giving 12 volts to the compressor to recharge the tank. So watch what happens. Now the compressor will cut on until this tank reaches the required uh, PSI, which is regulated and explained right here on the sticker on this pressure switch, which in my case is 150 PSI. I've got a good safe working kit here. So now I can just thing recharge and then we're going to give it a quick two. <laughs> and it's going to be so cool. I can't wait. This is my baby. This is my new baby right here. Mm. See this one right here? These are my two leaves that I ran over from my valve over there. Most of these things are non-polarized, which means you don't. Doesn't matter which negative or positive goes. In this case, this one is no different. But whatever kit you're using, I don't know. It might be polarized, but keep that in mind. So this is what happens when you test this bad boy out. I think it works. You think it works? I think it works. I think it works. Oh yeah, I think it works. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love it. Things are best. Right. We are ready to rock and install this thing now. In here, underneath my steering column, there's a harness to the left of my steering column panel that comes runs down here. And inside there, if you pull that some of here tape, you'll see that there's a green with a white stripe. So if you get on there with your test light, it'll rest with an open circuit. And then when I hit the horn button. You see, it's throwing a low ground. So that is the wire I'm going to use to trigger the valve for my air horns. So this green white is going to trigger a low ground, which is going to use to, to switch the valve on the air compressor to open it up to let the air come through the horns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that down. I'm also going to Y split it to a stealth switch underneath the dashboard. So that way I can have it work with the factory horn if I need to, or I can have it work normally with both horns, the factory and the train horn simultaneously. That's important because you just might need that someday and that's a little trick for me to you. So down here I'll put a switch to override it so I can differentiate what kind of horn, how, how much of an idiot is in front of me. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, but that's just, this is funny. But anyway, that's, that's the wire we're going to target in your vehicle. If you need this information for your vehicle, you can always send me a message and I'll be happy to tell you where the location color is um, at no, no charge, just, just so I can help you all out. So. Underneath the driver's dashboard, I had installed this little, it's a circular, it's about uh, like seven eighths of an inch round. So I flushed that in there. So I have this tied into the factory horn wire and this I'm going to extend and run out to the valve along with 12 volts, which I can tap off of here, which is from my previous video of the wireless charger. And that will trigger the power to the air compressor to turn on and off and I can have it on and off depending on how I want it depending on how I flip the switch so in my normal position I'll leave it on all the time when I need to be discreet I can just flip it off and use the horn as factory intended so there's the back of my switch all loomed up with the Y splitter going from the factory side over there and over here which is coming down which is going to run out to my valve under the hood where I'm mounting the train horn so now I got the truck jacked up 
gonna show you where I'm planning on putting these components. That air horn right there, that bracket's gonna go right up there. And it's gonna fire straight down so it'll bounce off the ground. It should give me good sound. Now that big ass tank right there will fit right up behind this grill perfectly. What I'm gonna do is take a piece of plumber strap and I'm gonna use self-tapping metal screws to go from here around the tank to the bottom. I'll do two, two of those straps that'll hold the tank firmly in there and it'll give me access to the auxiliary port so I could use an air filler tank and also drain the tank as well. And right up in here, this big piece of aluminum, this piece is totally blank so that will give me a good way to drill this right in there my compressor and that'll be right within the limits of the hose to go from here to here over here on my left side you see I got my 12 volts to and from for my air pressure switch and over there is my factory horn lead so that'll run from that side from the driver's side to here my passenger side up into this area where all my wiring connections will be made right there first i'm going to do is mount my tank it's going to go right up in here you can see i already got a stinger screw put up in the top of that piece of aluminum lip down here at the bottom of the bumper i got a hole there another pilot hole over there drilled out and what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount the tank in there i'm going to wrap it with this plumber strap it's going to cut it to fit put some anti-shock noise product around there so it doesn't rattle and I can move ahead and start mounting the other two connectors and the other horns and compressor next to it. Here's what the compressor tank looks like all mounted. Right here I got my release valve. Over here I got my check valve and I got my pressure switch located right on that side. Got my wiring from my compressor right there so that'll connect directly over there. And right above here in this location, you see the sky from here, that's where the train horns are going to go. Last part I gotta get mounted is the train horns themselves and they got those three holes right there, one, two, three. So I'm gonna use my air saw, I'm gonna cut right up in here. So I got marks, one pencil mark there and there. So I can cut out on the bottom side so that I can put the uh, bolt through sideways and tighten it up from the underside. And it'll be perfect, it'll be flush actually with the bottom of this front swirl which is just turning out amazing. So now I've got my two holes right here and here I cut out my air saw and then I just have to make my 90 degree pilot holes for the nuts and bolts so that way I can access the back side so I can put it through with a lock washer on one on either end of the air horn assembly. Then I can put that flashing tape on there to waterproof it and water seal it. Run out my wiring this here is going to be my output from my switch and then we got my wiring on the other side and after that's all done. This thing should be pretty much ready to roll. Getting there. Before I mount this unit up with these here supplied stainless steel nuts and bolts, I went ahead and I used some more of this flashing tape just to cover up the ugliness of the hole. I mean, even though the vehicle is aluminum and it won't rust, it doesn't mean that I should just make it look like who didn't run. So I put this on there and I also wrapped it around so that way when I stick my hand in there to run my bolts through here, I'll show you. I use my drill and I went up there and I got the the holes made so that way I can get behind there and I could take the unit put it up these will be sticking out so I could just line it up this one that one then I can just use a lock nut washer and sandwich it in there and that's where my air horns are gonna wind up hanging and that'll be their permanent home so here's what it looks like with the three trumpets mounted up in there lock washers on both sides. I actually used a nut on both sides that went through. I put a nut to lock this nut down so that way when I mounted these on there they'd stay put and I put two more in there just to make sure it stays snug and never backs out. Now I'm just gonna do the wiring. I know that these upside down shots are getting tired but I'm glad to be done but the installation is done. I think this thing is a work of art. Compressor right there. The lead tank right up in there, nice and snug away from everything. Air horns sound amazing. You can tell me what you think about the installation. If you have any questions, of course, I'm your guy. Shoot me a message, let me know what you got. I'll try to help you out.
now it's time to go play with these things, which is the fun part. I can't wait to scare the crap out of some people. I got this one neighbor I can't wait to honk at. This is what it looks like on the side, by the way. I mean, it's like, you can kind of see it right, right there, but I mean, normally you wouldn't never get that angle. You can barely to really really look right at the bottom in the center you can kind of see the tip of the horn i mean you can't get much better than that considering that the inside of the engine bay is completely untouched the only thing that you could tell is right here which is my relay for my power that's where the relay went up wound up going right there it's just 12 volts going right to the battery ground right here at the post on the battery and I got one going to the switch down below for the air pressure switch down here if you can see it that there is my switch that my friends is what I can just go click click now watch in this position air horns this position lame factory horn so that is awesome I definitely suggest you do that because if you get pulled over you're going to want that. Let the fun begin.